Hey guys, what's going on? This is me, Ali. It's a Thursday night. Happens to be Halloween. Halloween night. What you can see from probably my back on the outside. All kinds of critters are coming out. So, uh, it's a lot of activity going on. It's a big uh, holiday in the, not a holiday, but rather a big kind of a festivities going on in the Beacon Hill and in the Boston common area in Boston every year around Halloween night. But, um, instead of going out there and joining them, uh, which I'm going to do anyway, but for you guys, what I wanted to do is I'm going to make a quick little video about tomorrow, which is Friday, on Friday's question and about this Friday's question. So let's go to my computer and take a look and see what is this Friday's question that has come up on your comments, your emails, and so on that you guys send me. All right, so let's go. Alrighty, folks, let's sit down over here and see what we have for our presentation today. And I think the question that we're going to answer is from the uh, previous video that I put up online from the uh, um, that Canadian Academy of Endodontists meeting in the CBCT. And the question comes from Dr. Peter Bajan. Uh, and uh, Peter commented, uh, great CBCT, one question about obturation. Have you ever had the chance to extract a tooth that you've treated seven, ten years ago due to fracture or any other reason? I'm curious about long term. Of course, uh, that's a very good question. Obviously, all of us are concerned about long term outcomes when it comes to any obturation technique and obturation material. Anything that's new uh, would be of question to all of us, and we should always question that because materials may look good on paper, but their performance may be related to many other things. And we've all learned that lesson from Resilon and many other materials that have been um, um, introduced and have had to be retracted. Now, the reality of the matter, however, with this particular obturation technique when it comes to the bioceramics, they have been around since MTA, obviously since 1994, and the new formulation uh, of this third generation bioceramic, which is a pre-mixed bi uh, bioceramic, including this BC sealer and uh, its different formulations, uh, have now been around since uh, 2007. So it, it has had the um, question of time here behind it. And in fact, there have been now more than 10 million cases done with this, and we haven't heard any type of a problem or a um, Kind of these types of incidents that would be of any concern. So this particular material has had a, uh, a great track record and it has been validated, but, but it is a good question to always ask questions about these um, types of um, uh, potential problems. Now, I want to, I mean, I've done other videos in the past where I've shared specific uh, cases. There's going to be more. I mean, I have now done so many cases that um, um, these, as I'm coming back and do seeing more patients now, many of these patients are coming back for other root canals. So I'm seeing uh, constantly patients that have had um, previous root canals back in 2008, 2009, and all the way through. And um, uh, the, the one that um, I'm going to talk to you about is one that I saw a couple of years back, which was a patient that unfortunately needed to have uh, five root canals, uh, the same patient in 2008, where we did all of them hydraulic condensation, and I got a chance to see him for a follow-up and managed to get follow-up x-rays in all of them. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, these cases that were all done at that time, uh, in after this uh, six, seven year follow up, we're all intact and asymptomatic and doing very well. And the follow up x rays show that the cement is intact and is um, um, the teeth are uh, asymptomatic. Now, uh, I have, as I mentioned to you before, I've done also a study that I have one of my residents come to the office and pull uh, about 300 cases, consecutive cases, and we follow them up. And that study is being written and is hopefully going to get published soon. That's been in the works for a little while, but uh, it is going to get published. So I'll let you guys know where that is and when it is published. But I also wanted to show you this one particular case that uh, is, in fact, exactly what Peter's uh, question is about a tooth that has been treated and has been fractured and, and, and then taking a look at it. And this is a tooth that had root canal therapy, so lower second molar, it was a C-shaped root. You can see there is some condensing osteitis going on at the apical area of the tooth. And um, then root canal therapy was done. And during the obturation, you can see there's three main cones that have been placed in this a C of sealer that was injected and put into the C-shaped anatomy. They were seared off and then a provisional was placed uh, after a canal cap with a 
at that time, type of a resin bonded uh, to seal the orifices, and then the tooth was restored. Unfortunately, uh, down the line, the tooth cracked, and as you can see here in the follow-up x-ray after the tooth had cracked, you can see the breakdown is only on the distal area where the tooth was cracked. The apex is completely clear. Clear. So the tooth was extracted where the crack was validated and it's present in the distal area of the tooth. So lower second molar is cracked pretty uh, commonly, unfortunately. Not that commonly, but more commonly than other teeth. And so what we decided to do was to just section the apical area of the tooth and see what we have. And during the sectioning using a, a diamond burr, uh, you can see as, as we kind of cut, we can begin to see the gutta percha in the center of the root with a surrounding uh, perimeter of the biceramic ceiling. And as we go further up the root and we cut and we cut, we can see now the three uh, gutta percha, the three main cones are visible with the uh, surrounding uh, biceramic cement that is the hallmark of the sealer-based obturation being the uh, hydraulic condensation. And uh, as they go all the way up, you can see that what's remarkable is the adaptability and the persistence of the cement and without any shrinkage after it had set inside the canal and this nice bond to its surrounding. And that's really a function of the material being so hydrophilic and having great flow properties that is able to do that. And uh, this case is, is a nice case that shows that. And this is one of those cases that I did early on that kind of proved to me that this is a technique that I can rely on uh, for it to work. And had it not been for the fracture in the distal area of this tooth, this tooth would have been just fine. So studies like this, especially there's been um, this, this one case of a micro CT that was done down at the University of Tennessee, where canals were um, instrumented using the uh, end of sequence, which is a constant um, uh, tapered instrumentation, and then by ceramic cement was uh, placed, and then the tooth was obturated using hydraulic condensation. And uh, you can see that uh, hydraulic condensation pushed the sealer into these little idiosyncrasies and nooks and crannies of the canal into the oval areas and into the isthmuses, filling the whole thing up. Uh, and that is a very nice, uh, um, again, as a, because of the flow properties and this hydrophilic properties, and this is how you can achieve this type of a look. So there is going to be more cases that I'm going to show more of the healing cases. I have actually nice cases of sectioning on apicoectomy cases that have also had to be extracted due to fr uh, coronal fractures with apical healing that shows this, the validity of the lid technique. That's going to be a separate video. I'll probably make that to, to talk about the lid technique a little bit more. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it. I will put on more cases of healing for you guys uh, over the time uh, as those keep coming. And uh, uh, just to put your mind at ease that the technique that I've been using, and I've been now, this technique has been used now, over 10 million cases have been done uh, nationally and internationally with hydraulic condensation. And as you can see, after so many cases over the past, since 2000, 2007, which is already a fairly long time, or we're already in a 12-year period um, of the cement being out there and being sold and used, we haven't had any type of an incident uh, of a problem uh, of this, uh, you know, that, that has been a problem. Anyway, so just wanted to share this case with you, and it was a good question I wanted to answer, and there's going to be other videos where I will discuss the, uh, something related to this in more detail. So I'm going to go change and uh, get into my costume and head out to celebrate the uh, Halloween night, which is big around this area. And uh, for you guys, I hope you have a great Halloween uh, tonight and tomorrow being Friday, where you're going to watch this video. Have a great Friday and also a, a great weekend. And until the next video, let's save some tea. See you guys soon. Hey folks, just wanted to wish you all a happy Halloween. Go out there, have fun, get yourself some candy. Don't forget to brush and floss afterwards so you can avoid the endodontist. Happy Halloween. <laughs>